Hey, this is Robert here at Guzzi Fabrication. Now, I've put together a great video for you this week. 10 welding tips and tricks for auto body, thin auto sheet metal. Really going to help you out on your projects? Let's get into this. Hey, if you've ever tried to weld up a hole in sheet metal with a MIG welder, well, you know that can be pretty tough. I'm going to show you a fast and easy way to do it. Now, this is 18-gauge sheet metal. We're going to drill a 5 16 hole, two holes. We're going to do it two different ways. Now, those are pretty decent-sized holes to be uh, using a MIG welder to fill those up. And the way we're going to do it, 332nd TIG rod. Now, here's the trick. You want to roughly ball this thing up to the size of the hole or as close as possible. You want to get a tight circle out of it while trying not to pinch your fingers. And then you put a little bend on it, just like that. Well, you can see what we're going to do with this. Now, we're going to use this uh, TIG rod as filler rod, just like we were TIG welding, but we're using a MIG. We just take our time and work around it. And there it is. It's a nice, solid weld, fast and easy. Wire brush that thing off. Now I'm going to show you a second way because maybe you have an oblong hole or an irregular, irregular gap, something like that. What you can also do is just bend a little L into that filler rod. And this is 332nd ER70S filler rod. You can get this at any uh, welding supply store. We just get, a tack, get it tacked first and then we just work around it and we're basically uh, TIG welding with a MIG welder. Really fast and simple. Okay, let's get a uh, close-up shot of it. Solid welds. Almost flush with the surface. Minimum grinding. Shot of the backside. Yeah, that that's uh, good for me. TIG welding filler rod. Okay. No backside access. Sometimes you need to make a patch or fill up a, uh, a much larger size hole or void and you have no access to the backside. What do you do? Here's a quick, easy way to do this. Okay, now this is going to be our patch panel. I'm going to drill an eighth inch hole in it. And we're just uh, demoing, say, like an antenna hole, like we're uh, filling a, an antenna hole, putting a patch behind it. And that's so you can roughly uh, cut out your patch. And you'll have to tailor this patch. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Get it cut out here. Now, it can't be too big. It has to just go inside, have enough. This is a mini slide hammer. And it has an eighth inch screw on the end of it. So we don't need the weight. Reassemble it. We've got a handle on it now. Now we can thread it right into that hole that we made in our patch. And now, even if you don't have access 
to the backside, can't get to it, well, we can fish this uh, patch right behind it. It is very secure with that handle. We position, put a little upward pressure on it. Get a couple tacks. And we can put a few more if we want. Unscrew it. And now we can finish out our weld around it. And then fill that hole in the center also. Wire brush that off. And give you a look. Yeah, that's a lifesaver right there. Now we can finish welding that thing out. We're good to go. Hey, if I'm providing solid, useful content, you can help support the channel. Buy me a coffee. Coffee.com slash Goosey Fabrication. Now, how to set tungsten stick out. How far should the tungsten stick out of the cup? The width of the cup. is your maximum tungsten stick out. Now that's across the board. It works with any cup. That's the proper way you set tungsten stick out. Now we're going to tighten that down and double check. And that's it. You're ready to go. Hey, if you're welding quarter inch plate, don't worry about that slag ball, but if you're doing some thin auto body sheet metal, make your life easier, do this. Because this little slag ball will cause the uh, arc to stutter. You don't want that on thin gauge metal. There are two key things that you have to do in order to make this work. But once you get it dialed in, it works well. Okay, first up, first key is whether you're using a finger switch or a foot pedal. The trick is on off as quickly as possible. We don't ramp up or ramp down. It's just hit it on off. That's the first key. You can kind of see how fast we're going, initiating the arc and letting off. And that's the result. Now the second key is you double the number of amperage that you're using on that given thickness of metal. Now we all know that the rule of thumb is one amp per thousandth thickness of material. Well, you just double it with this method. Now that was a bud joint. Now we're going to move over to a lap. See how it works out. Just boom. Boom. On off. On off. Once you have your machine set to the correct amperage, on off. Real simple. Get the correct angle on your tungsten, and you're good to go. So we've got a couple of coupons of 3003-060 aluminum. Like I mentioned, hey, usually I run about 70 amps on this, but we're bumping up to 140. Keeping a really tight gap, that's really critical on the aluminum. Does not work well with a gap on aluminum. And just boom, on off, on off. There you see it's left a really nice little tack. Join those two pieces together. Now we can take off on whatever we're doing with that.
we can get those parts assembled then finish out the welds so let's try the aluminum with a lap joint And there you see. Now you want to keep in mind these are just fusion welds, so uh, yeah, they don't have any fill or anything like that, so you can't expect them to be super strong. Hey, the last one up. Let's try an outside corner joint. Yeah, we're just mocking those up by hand, holding them, then boom. And it's really not putting a lot of heat into the part. You get that second one? Hey, we're good to go. We can uh, run, a, run a bead down this, whatever we're doing next. Okay, you see all of that buildup? All of that is gonna cause the gas flow to not come out and you're gonna have a lack of shielding gas. You can see how much, uh, how restricted it is. So invest in a pair of these. These are welding pliers. You can get them at uh, any welding supply store. Very handy. And the handiest thing about them that needle nose will get in there and clean it off. Make short work of it. And so these welding pliers have the cutters Plus, they have these really handy jaws that you can remove the tips really easily. Okay, here's another pointer. These are called consumables for a reason. Okay, now each one of these tips are marked with a corresponding wire size. This is 035. They do wear out. And if they do start getting worn, man, you can get an erratic weld. So it's always just a uh, good practice. These are really inexpensive. Start a uh, project off on a good foot. Just replace it. And now our cleaned out nozzle. Now we have total gas flow. I love this TIG welding trick. We're going to use this TIG welder, turn it into a spot welder. Here's how we're going to do it. Okay, now we don't use the sharpened end. We use the blunt end. Load that up. Now the next step is very critical. It has to be set just below flush. If it's protruding, it's going to stick to the metal. Won't work. Just below flush, not too far in. Get that cinch down. And this is the critical step to make this work. Whatever the amperage is, double it. Like something like this, I'd run around 70 amps for 18-gauge uh, sheet metal. So we're going to double that. Got a couple coupons.
And like I mentioned, we're using 18 gauge sheet metal. And we're going to spot weld these two pieces together. Give you a little demo here. And this works really well with the uh, with auto restoration, things like that. Now, okay, so the way we need to do this uh, properly, hold the TIG cup flush. Now we initiate the arc for two, three, four seconds. Now, if you leave the arc on too long, it will burn through. So you want to do a couple practice pieces. Now we have full penetration. Now we're going to do a little destructive test to show you how strong this method is. Now there's no one method or one welding method for everything across the board. This is something else to put in your toolbox for the situation. Yeah, that is a very strong weld nugget. That, yeah, it's as good as any uh, spot welder resistance welder there it is try it sometimes you're going to run into situations where it's very difficult to get a good ground well i've got a welder's trick that's really going to help you out maybe working on a fiberglass car or a corvette something like that whatever the situation is this is the trick for you we're going to make a tool, and if you're welding on your uh, project, well, you're probably using a MIG welder. You got voltage, and then you set your wire feed speed. Now, if you lose ground and interrupt that circuit, the wire's still pushing out. That's going to jack your weld up, make it a real bad time for you. So we're going to finish off this little tool. This is just an old uh, cable copper cable we want to save the copper anyway these days especially we're going to use our little drill here and we want to tighten that thing up because we're just going to put this in our toolbox and uh, keep it from now on and there we go tool made and this is how you use it well any irregular shape square rectangular doesn't matter that will conform twist it really nice and tightly by hand then we use some uh, vice grips now we have a very positive ground And that'll get you out of a lot of uh, situations where that's an issue. And then when we're done, well, it's very reusable. We just uh, keep it wound up as tightly as possible, put it in the tool.